What? Listen to this podcast right now! Me? Do you want to hear a fucking podcast about anything and everything? Yeah. Like movies, oh my music, God. television, and more? Oh my God. Well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Subscribe to Journey Into Comics Network, Woo. and you get Podcastrophy, oh hosted God. by me, yes. Dick. Why not throw a couple bucks to the Patreon? It's yes. your choice. Yeah. This is a Podcastrophy. That sounds so awesome. The following, the following, the following. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. A journey into comics. A journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adulting Ain't Easy, where we talk about being an adult and why it's so dang hard to do so. I am one of your hosts, Liz, and I'm joined again by my dearly beloved husband, Andrew. Hello, everyone. Yeah. So, um, today is part two of our Africa storytelling journey. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed um, the... First part with Johannesburg, I know people have been asking us a lot, like, oh, what's your, what was your favorite part of Africa? And we really, at least I've been having a hard time, um, trying to come up with an answer because it's just, it's so, there were so many good and interesting things that happened. Um, so I kind of, that's why we decided to do it kind of split. So if I had to pick like something from Johannesburg, I think my favorite part would have probably been just being at Humala, and I think you would agree with that, too. I think that was the most immersive, relaxing experience there. Right. And, again, that's what we were saying, that the that Johannesburg and Cape Town are, like, almost two different countries in itself. Like, they're mm-hmm. so different. And that's why we're going to talk about it today with Cape Town. Because Cape Town is more of the, um, like, the urban living, um, city life with a beach. It was, it was very... If not for a few things differently, it could have passed for a U.S. city. Right. Like, it was very... It was tall buildings. Like, any, like, beach town or beach mm-hmm. city. Oh, but especially with all this humidity we've had today, and, like, since we've been back, I just want to be back where it was cool and not and not humid and it was just perfect. Like, mm-hmm. we were next to water and it wasn't humid. Yeah. Like, I know probably in the summer there it's probably awful, but... That's why we're not going in the summer for a while. Exactly. But yeah, I think Cape Town, it, Johannesburg and Cape Town are like night and day different in terms of the experience, the cultural exposure. Like, if we would have went like just, because like, we had an option to go just to Cape Town or just Johannesburg. If we went just to Cape Town, we would have been robbed of an African experience. I agree. I th- there's not as many, because you get more, because um, Johannesburg is more of the culture and the animals and the nature. Whereas Cape Town, it does have access of nature, but it's more cultural and kind of like the history. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of history, and I'm not saying that Cape or that Johannesburg doesn't have a history. It's just we didn't get to see that part, and that's mm-hmm. what the best part of going back would be like. Is right, to, I'm pretty sure to just experience the. There's probably like a million different things in Cape Town we didn't get to do, and another million that we didn't do in Johannesburg. Mm-hmm. So, but I think we did a decent job at getting, mm-hmm. at doing, like, kind of more of the common things to do in Cape Town. Right. Because we never really saw the, uh, what the city of Johannesburg was like, because we got on the outskirts of it and then went further away. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's also very, maybe all big cities are kind of the same once you get down to it. But, but I think Cape Town, I think, was nice because it gave us a little bit of a... Not a tropical vacation, but it gave us a little bit of a typical honeymoon vacation. There was water, there was beach, there was stuff to see. Even though we couldn't go in the water, because it was... You still, well, still went in the water. We'll, we'll get to that, but <laughs> it wasn't like... Well, the first... Pretty much the first full day we were there, that probably would have been the best day to go, like, swimming or go to the beach, because mm-hmm. it was just beautiful, and it was pretty warm, 
Um, but we just the way our schedule worked out, it didn't really match up. But right, that was our big tour day. Yeah. So I guess we could start with our lovely flight there, which was like the most easygoing flight I've ever been on. It was bizarre. The, yeah. So. We flew out, so in order to get to Cape Town, we went to the nearest airport, which is a domestic airport called Lanseria, and um, it was, so we got there, you know, the standard two hours early, and, you know, they gave us our boarding time and whatnot, and then all of a sudden, like, by the time we were ready to just sit down, oh, sorry, I was trying to get Max to stay up. Sorry, our Um, dog was trying to interrupt our podcast. (laughs) So it's basically, like... We were just, like, settling down, maybe getting drinks and stuff, and all of a sudden we hear, like, the whatever number flight to Cape Town, we're going to start beginning to board in a few minutes. And we're like, what? And, like, great, we had all the two, the couple and the um, mom and daughter duo um, actually there with us. Like, we were all on the same flight, and so we all kind of looked at each other like, really? Like, this super early. So... We went over there and we loaded up and we actually ended up leaving like 10 minutes early because the way that they do it, at least when there's no delays at this um, particular airport is, or regional airport is, if everybody's checked in, they automatically start boarding, which I know it's a small airport, so that's easier to do, but oh my gosh, how nice would that be if that actually happened in real life? Like in everyone? Like... When you're at O'Hare Airport or at something. Alright, everyone's here. Let's just go ahead and go. Well, that one, like, it might just be because the plane sit around more there. Like, at O'Hare, the plane you were on was somewhere else five minutes before it got to your gate. Exactly. So that was kind of the, the, it was just very different and very cool. Um, the only the thing TSA I, was. The TSA was nothing. Like, literally, just, as long as, if you didn't have a laptop, you could just put your bag Take nothing out of it on the thing and walk through fully clothed, everything in your pockets, and that was it. With your shoes on. Yeah. They'll still scan you and they send you on your way. Mm hmm. And we actually flew with Mango Airlines, which, which is a local, like an African um, domestic, I think. Yeah. Airline. And they actually, I mean, the plane was fairly new. The seats were really good. The only thing we weren't really used to was that. Um, they didn't give you complimentary drinks, so if you wanted water, you had to pay for it. That was that was weird. Because usually, like, and I don't know if it's, like, literally anyone I've been on, even if it's only been a 45-minute flight, they do at least one, like, drink round. Mm-hmm. And you don't pay for it unless it's alcohol, whatever. And it was weird because it was it was a cash business. They did no cards. It was cash and it did exact change. Right, yeah. Which is really weird. Mm-hmm. We got a little bottle of water, but... It was just odd to not get, like, a cup with, like... A cup with ice and a Diet Coke. Just right. because you're there. Right. And I... That was that was, that was was the weird one. Especially because, like, we're lucky we had exact change. I don't think we even did. I think they were lucky they were able to break our... Yeah. Like, I think we had 42 or something. We didn't have a 10 or whatever. It was, like... Mm-hmm. It ended up being, like, one of the more expensive drinks we had just because we were on a plane. Yeah, and they sold... I don't... Yeah, and I mean, this... This airline is not an international one, so... Well, they might be for, Af- for like, Africa, so I don't know. But I think our specific flight, it was just because... I don't know. Just because it was a shorter flight, even mm-hmm. though it was still three hours, but... Mm-hmm. And, it, and there was no, like... There was no screens. It was very minimalistic. I remember looking at, the, like, their magazine, and... Yeah, it was just... Luckily, it was, like, a... I think it was a... Was it two-by-two? Uh, no, it, three by three. Three by three, and I was looking to get an aisle, mm-hmm. which is always nice. Stretch my leg out a little bit, but um, yeah, I, they did have good legroom in that flight mm-hmm. too. That was, I think, I do the normal. I think they're in their uh, their little uh, the flight attendant spiel was more interesting. Well, we didn't really see a ton of the Cape Town Airport when we got there because we just went through arrivals and whatnot. And and because we were domestic to domestic, we didn't have to go through customs, which is nice. Or any extra things. It was just like we were, like a, like a normal flight in the U.S. It was just get in, mm-hmm. go, get your bag, and get out of there. Yeah. The baggage claim, I remember being really long, though. Yeah, they did take their sweet-ass time to get their bags out. Because you would see, like, the same, you'd, like, see a row of bags... 
and then it would stop. And then there'd be, like, the same bags, plus maybe, like, one or two others. It seemed like, like they were putting them on, like, like eight at a time. And then, like, let them run for a minute, and then they would put more on. I don't know if it's just the loading. I don't know. It was very weird. Or, like, because, like, one person in our group would get a bag. And then, even though they put two bags on the same time, that next bag would come, like, ten minutes later, it seemed like. And other bags would come in yeah, between. It took a little longer than we would have liked. But, I mean, it's a different country. It's not, like, where the U.S. where you're like, go, go, go. Right. Um, so then we got to meet our new tour guide, Tony, and it was interesting to see the two different tour guides because I think they both encapsulated, like, the vibe and the people of that town. Right. Because Johannesburg, it's very, like, I guess I, it sounds weird, but very tribe-like, like, oh, we're family. Like, he kept saying, we are family, like, this is, like, an experience, like, we're one with nature, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of spiel and then with tony it was more like a cultural like this is what modern africans kind of this is what modern south africa is like yeah you know updated and all that yeah this i always think of like the the old little like not motto but like thing of like my old hometown which is at the corner of progress and history Mm -hmm. and i think that's a lot of how cape town is they're 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 a modern city they've evolved a lot they still remember their past and still take note of it. They're still... I mean, apartheid was only 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Nah, maybe more than that now. Still. Uh, so it's all very fresh, and there, and there's the, the culture thing, and you're getting, like, the typical big city issues that any big city has. And it's, and I think, yeah, both those guys really... Because they both were born and raised in the areas they were the guides for. Yeah. Which I think is a, which is a nice touch for... Because people just become true guides and only have been living there a few years. They don't have the same experience. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so really, like, we got there, what, around, when we were there, did we get there around dinner time or something? Yeah, like, 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 like at four. Like. Yeah, so it was, like, we really didn't get to spend a, mostly, like, that day that we got there was mostly a travel, mm-hmm. kind of like a travel thing, so we, so we ended up, where we were staying in Cape Town was actually, they're called luxury holiday apartments. So, in essence, it's pretty much like having your extended stay because it had yeah. a kitchen it had um a i think some fo- pots of pans a like stove yep stove your bedroom bathroom and then like your tv area right it was very yeah it, it was, was definitely a nice change because we were you know when we were in johannesburg it was just the standard hotel room and i think if we would have had a standard hotel room i think we might have killed each other <laughs> because it's just a lot of close quarters, um, and it was nice to kind of spread out and... Have a separate bedroom. Yeah, and because I know Andrew sometimes has a hard time sleeping, and at least in this apartment, you know, if I were sleeping, he could go, you know, he could go in the living room and do something rather than, like, just sitting in the bed and feeling trapped. Like watching, like, either watch TV or go, like, to the table and go through some stuff, and I was yeah, because, like, when we were other rooms, there was, like... Well, the bathroom's here, the bed's here, the TV's here. It's all within, like, almost, like, arm's reach of each other. And then Liz is asleep, so I have to be very quiet. I can't, like, get up and get out of bed because she'll wake up. And there's no other chairs. Like, any of the other rooms we had had no other chairs in them mm-hmm. that I remember. It was very much bed, bathroom. It wasn't, like, a U.S. hotel room where there's usually, like, a desk and maybe, like, an armchair. It was, or a couch or something. Or a couch. Was, yeah. It was very much... Like, the, a lot of them had, like, a separate... Not separate living space, but yeah, like separate like common areas. Yeah, that weren't like in the room. They expect you to like leave your room. Like this, the room is just for like sleeping and getting ready. Mm-hmm. But so that was a nice thing, and then we went to our first restaurant. Yeah, which was called Balducci's, which was a like literally we walked in there, and the look of it, it was like a Maggiano's type thing. So you felt like we were in like. I don't know, like, casual clothes, and we walk in, and I'm just like, Andrew, we are so underdressed. Right. Because I was wearing, like, a t- a nicer, like, graphic t-shirt. And... I wish we, I, we didn't change from the flight. No, we didn't have very much time to, like, it was basically, I think we maybe had, like, a half an hour, and then we were going to leave for yeah, dinner. like, enough to, like, clean, clean up, refresh deodorant and all that, and then, like, yeah, go up, pop your bags off, and then we'll, like, in a half hour, we'll come meet down for it. Like, okay, so it's, like, basically... Drop, get situated, take it all in, drink a glass of water, put some, freshen up a little bit, and then go. 
Yeah, so when we walked into this place, it was, like, super fancy. But then as kind of, like, as time went on, there were people that were coming in more casually, which was nice because I was, like, super worried that, oh, my gosh, are these the kind of restaurants they're going to take us to? And I don't know if I have enough clothing to really accommodate for that, so. Right. And it was interesting that this place was also a place we ended up spending a lot of time at, had a lot of meals at, which is, like, this big mall essentially yeah. it's called the v and a waterfront and so basically those it they were named this these waterfront areas were named after queen victoria and her not her husband her grandson alfred uh, yeah i think it was alfred yes and so because both of them did different things for cape town and this was their honoring of them yeah so um so with that there so there's the waterfront but then they also have turned out like kind of like a boardwalk situation and also like it's just a big mall like the victoria wharf mall is like a tip of, like a huge like u.s mall but then the alfred is more of like the specialty shops yeah it's like, like more like a, and... it's more we never really went in there but like it's definitely more like kind of what it used to be like, like more of like in the past how the mall probably looked like, and then the Victoria was more of like modern times. Right. Like they had a lot of like very American, like like an H and M, a Levi. Um, they had all these designer stores, right, from all over the Fancies. world, and yeah, it was quite overwhelming when we walked through the first time because I was not expecting to be like in this basically this giant mall that had a grocery store in the basement Mm -hmm. but we didn't find that out till later that was interesting yeah so so the place and it's funny because the place where we first had dinner had probably like 10 to 20 pages of just food and like there's just it was so it was overwhelming we call probably could have spent all our meals there and we could have had something different each night because there was so much food there i think i'd rather gone there to that other restaurant we went to but we'll get to that Mm mm-hmm so it was just the food was really good, and I remember just... the um, if we because um, we had garlic bread for the table, and the garlic bread was literally like a pizza with like car. It was like a pizza sized like thing of that sliced in like actual like pizza slices, and then it had grilled on onion- or sautéed onions, caramelized onions, and the- didn't have any sauce. It was just like the olive oil kind of coating. Which actually and... Good. and I don't like onions and i thought it was pretty good i got i didn't get one with like heavy with onions but it was i thought that was pretty good and then some people got pizza i got i think I you got pizza i did get margarita pizza and you got like some pasta pasta that had like ham in it it was, it was pretty good mm-hmm. we, that was not being our only leftovers from the trip because that was the one restaurant we felt like we could comfortably take leftovers home yeah well especially now because we had a, a f- actual fridge it wasn't like a mini fridge and we and we knew ahead of time, like okay, we're gonna have two extra days here, so we need to like if we're gonna have leftovers, let's stock, stock them. We ended up not needing it, but mm-hmm. it worked out. Yeah. So then, after that, we kind of got to explore the mall a little bit, which was kind of, which was fun. I mean, it was cool to see what was around, and you know, just like trying to acclimate ourselves because a lot of what's going on and a lot of like. Um, what we were doing is surrounded by that area. Because mm-hmm. once you get downtown, it's kind of hard to figure your way around. Uh-huh. So at least with the V&A waterfront, it's a little bit more... It can be confusing, but I think when you're there, as long as we were, we were able to pretty much figure out our way around. That's really interesting because it's... The way it was located, the front side and the back side were both facing water. Because mm-hmm. one was like the inner harbor and one was like the ocean. And it was very... Yeah. It's very interesting because, like, the back side was more of like, oh, like if they're gonna do a concert, they would do it on the like on the back side. They have like this like big band shell that always has like a screen on so they can play whatever. And there's seating for small bands. There's street performers. There's a big Ferris wheel. Mm-hmm. There's bars with outdoor seating. There's other like outdoor kiosk type shops, and they did a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it was really easy. Like when we were on, we had two extra days. It just spend it on the waterfront because there were so many different things you could do and to occupy your time and stuff so that was really nice so then our first full day we were there we were um basically kind of left to our own devices 
For oh no, was that yes, the first it, day? Was the ostrich farm or was that? I always get so confused, but I thought the first full day we went to the ostrich farm. No, because wasn't the ostrich was the ostrich farm after the winery? No. Because then the first day was the Sunday, and that's when we had the day to ourselves. Unless we did the ostrich farm and then did that. Did we do the ostrich farm and then that? We did the ostrich farm and then go to this. Yeah. So we went. So. Originally, no. yeah, because Monday was Monday Fun Day was the wine day. Okay, and so that was after we went to the jewelry store. Yeah, so we went to breakfast. Yeah, we went. We, to we breakfast. did a lot of things that day. It's hard yeah, to keep it so all straight. Yeah, so we went to breakfast, and then he's like, "Oh, I want to take you to this museum," and we're like, th- "He's like the Diamond Museum." I'm like, "We're like Diamond Museum. Okay, this is kind of interesting." Turns out it's actually a jewelry store with, like, a... They have, like, a historical kind of tour of this specific company. Plus their, uh... Like, where they make it all. They had, like, all mm-hmm. their, like, their shadows for people, like, actually work. It was just a Sunday, so no one was there. Yeah, so And it like, was bizarre. Sorry, I don't want me to jump on no, you, but it was fine. just, like, when we go up to it, there's just a guy sitting, and there's this big door, and I'm like, what the hell? And you talk to him, and it's like, how many are with you? I'm like... I don't like how this is going. This is a little weird. Because we're, like, in, like, the middle of, like, kind of the industrial district. Mm-hmm. But they do it because, I mean, this this is, like, a high-end diamond air like store. Like, expensive diamond. Yeah, so pieces. they were kind of, like, they're very on high alert. Like, we couldn't even go to the bathroom without having someone with a key card let us out. Including, like, one door has to be locked before the other door can be unlocked. It was very very secure but we mm-hmm. once we were in like the showroom after we did like the tour we got to see like oh this is how you know when you're close to diamonds this is how you know where the yeah, different this types the, of this diamonds this is the type of rock that you see that people that indicates that there may be diamonds there this is what so when people are digging down they're like oh we're on the right track or oh this is a dead end yeah and then they had like the different like the different stages of the diamond and then they also had like the history of like oh this is what you know, a diamond day. ring would look, or like a diamond piece of jewelry would look like at these different eras of time, and, right. and that how, was really. And cool when different to look cuts at. came out, and mm-hmm. how and, it used to be like at some point they didn't even like have the diamonds finished; they were just unfinished diamonds in like a setting. Mm-hmm. So they're all like rough and jagged, and it was more yeah. kind of eclectic. And it told like, oh, this is the guy who first gave diamond to someone on like as a proposal, and that's what started the tradition, and. Mm-hmm. It was very interesting. And they had, like, also, like, famous diamonds. Like, they had, like, the Hope Diamond. Well, it was, like, a replica of Well, it wasn't actual ones, things. obviously. But, yeah, it was, like, famous diamonds through time. And then... They showed us, like, they have a special cut that they do on their diamonds. And, and the customer... The cust Or the... The customer. The actual store is called Shemansky. And they do have, like, stores in the U.S., but it's mostly a... South African kind of right. jewelry store. We didn't find out they did have like one on like New York, but they didn't have one in Chicago and very specific and yeah. Yeah, they had a couple of like different like signature um like they had the signature like their cut that they do that's different and then they have a couple pieces that are like that's kinda like their bread and butter kind of thing. It's and pretty... we did look at the prices. The one ring that like it didn't look like it was even held by anything. It was just like looked like it was just being like cupped lightly mm-hmm. by uh, the band. But yeah, sorry. But yeah, getting go go back to your uh, when we got to see so, some stuff and prices. Well, and they also not just like they didn't just sell diamonds. They had other gemstones, but they were really pushing tanzanite. So tanzanite, it's like that purple stone. And right now, there's like kind of almost like a shortage of tanzanite. So like there's there's, there's a weakening supply of tanzanite. yeah a weak. Weakening supply, and they're saying that in 10 years, tanzanite's not going to have... Like, there's not going to be any tanzanite. No new tanzanite. So, they're kind of like... They kind of put... A lot of the jewelry stores there were pushing tanzanite. Get your tanzanite. It's cheap now. And when you... You know, as time goes on, it's going to be more expensive. Blah, blah, blah. And... Um, yeah, and then there was one piece that Andrew looked like, even though he was just like, oh, like, look, that's really cool, because it was like a butterfly, and, um, pulled it out, and they gave us the price, which is well, funny. Well, first they give you the price, like, and they do the conversion, and mm-hmm. the day rate of the value, and it's like, oh, it's still that. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it was like this necklace, it was a beautiful necklace, don't get me wrong, but it was $2,000, and we were just like, yeah, we don't have that money, too. 
And plus, if we would have had to use our credit card, and with the three percent charge, that's on a big expense. International, that would have been a lot of money. Right. The other, so, the other couple we were with were more. They got further than we would have gotten over mm-hmm. like a pair of earrings. I think. Yeah, she was looking at a pair of earrings, and that wasn't even bad. It was like nine hundred dollars for a like diamond or the tanzanite. And they were like they flip up for a couple of days on it, but mm-hmm. it was they were very it was very nice stuff. It was just that and then, we were not per- honestly. I don't think Andrew and I were prepared for that, or it, I weren't even like in the market for jewelry. To be right, honest. and like, and they were we were talking to our tour guide like Tony, like Tony, do people actually like go out and buy it? Like, do they go ham on this stuff? And he's like, yeah, there's been a few people that will drop thousands and thousands of dollars, like just to get. Those kind of things. Didn't, didn't, I remember said one guy like bought like the big, like, le- as like leopard pendant or like panther. No, it was a leopard ring, and he. The story was that he was diagnosed with like terminal cancer, and so he wanted to buy something for his wife and. And then for himself. Yeah, and, so it was kind of like something like that, which is sweet. But and, that that, di- that ring was. It was massive. It was like, massive. A lot of gemstones. That thing was. It was going to be heavy. It wasn't like ten, not tens of thousands, but it was a lot of money. Yeah. It was at least high single digit thousands of dollars for a nice looking ring, but it was still a giant kind of gaudy ring. Yeah. But also really interesting that show him also had a bar. Yes. I was assuming they get you a little, little loose. So you're a little more loose with your pocketbook. Yeah. But it was really, but the one thing that were nice is they were not pushy. Cause even like you go to like, a, you walk by a jewelry store, like in a mall here, or they're like, Hey, what do you think? Let me look at this. Like, they're very, like, they're you should very buy this hands now. Off, like, yeah, they were like, oh no, we're, we're just looking around. Oh, okay, and then, well, if you think anything, I'll be over here. And then, like, wander away. Like, they don't like serve you. Like, do you want to see this one? Do you want to see? No, they were very. That's off. Which they was let nice. us look, and I think they realized that you know we're tourists, and there's a good chance that we won't. And our buy age something. is not like. Yeah, and it's just I think they want to get the Shemansky name out so that like, right. oh, if they're in New York, they might. You know, at some point, want to buy something from them or whatever. Right. I'm it's, assuming the. Oh, go ahead. No, you're fine. So I'm assuming the main reason, like, it's a stop there is because it pay, ends up paying off because even if, like, 80% of the people don't get anything, that 20% make it worth it because they're spying some nice pieces, some bigger yeah, pieces. Right. Right. So then after that, we got to go to a fun little place called. Um, I don't remember. It was an ostrich farm, but I don't remember the name of it. Yeah, I'm... But it was pretty, it was very interesting because it was not originally planned. Normally for the tour, any other time of the year, we would be going to Table Mountain, which is like a cable car ride up to the, the one of the higher points in Cape Town. And so unfortunately, place... um, during that time, we, it goes through maintenance every year. It goes like through a month of maintenance, mm-hmm. which is in like the winter time, which... It's fine, and we'll get into, like, what we did instead. Uh, or, like, we still were able to go on Table Mountain. It's just um, not as high as, you know, what we would have normally got. We didn't go to the top. We went halfway. So we were kind of apprehensive about this ostrich farm. I was I was a little worried. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, really? Is the ostrich farm really going to be as good as Table Mountain? Right. And, it's, what do you think ostrich farming? Like, oh, it's gonna be like there's like a random, like almost like a petting zoo, but with ostriches. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it was okay. We um, we ended up um, getting to learn a lot about the ostrich. Um, I did not realize like their build, their how fast they grow. Oh yeah, they had taxidermied like, um, in like taxidermied models of an ostrich at a couple different stages in their right. baby life. And it was just like from day th- one to day five, they triple or quadruple in size. Yeah. Like, cause you're like, you know how big the eggs are. Like that's the thing you always think of like an ostrich egg. It's like equivalent of like 20 or 22 chicken eggs. So it's a big, massive thing. And they show like, Oh, here's the one at first hatch. Like, oh, it's a tiny little thing. And it's like, like they could have told me this is, this is at birth. This is it. Uh, four weeks, this is it, 12 weeks or something. I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. But not like, oh, this is one day, three days, five days. It was like, that thing is growing quick. Mm-hmm. And like, it puts on like a foot in height, it mm-hmm. so seems like. Yeah, and then they showed us some of the like carvings that they... So a big thing that people buy in Africa are carved 
um, shells of ostrich e- ostrich eggs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was cool to see like some of that, and they actually the ones that they had in the gift shop are ones that they've made um, on the farm, which was kind of cool. And then we got to go and feed the ostriches, and they actually had like. They had probably, like, eight different pens that you could feed them with, but literally it was, like, ostriches and emus as far as the eye could see. Oh, yeah. In different pens and... Do you want to tell them what you did before we fed the ostriches? What did I do before that? You stood on some ostrich eggs. No, that was during. But, yeah, so they actually had a... And I don't know if it was, like, a replica or if they were a real nest of ostrich eggs, but we got to stand on top of them and none of them cracked. I think you had to be, like, what, 300 pounds, they said, maybe? 300 kilograms. Yeah, for it to break. And they said the only animal that can that has a bite force to break into an ostrich egg is a hyena. Yes. So, that was very interesting. And then we got to uh, feed the ostriches. And let me tell you, they're greedy little sons of bitches. And for not having teeth, they still kind of hurt. Yeah, so they're very aggressive when they're, like, Especially picking young your ones. food. Yeah. Um, and we kind of, like, you kind of had to divide your food out because they were, like, we stopped, I think, like, five different times at different pens and Mm -hmm. got to see both male and female. We got to see, um, even though emus aren't even native to Africa, they still had emus that you could feed, which I thought was interesting. And I did not realize that, uh, that the male and females were different colors. I thought it was, like, just, like, you know, like how cows come to cows come in different colors. I Mm -hmm. thought it was just, like... Oh, there's the black and white ones, then there's the gray ones. No. No. Nope, Men are black are... and white, women yeah. are gray. Yeah, so that was really interesting. But the funniest thing was when we were, so like Andrew and I are like trying to kind of portion out for each pen so we could feed them equally. One of our, the <laughs> Melissa, she had her bag and she was feeding a ostrich and he took the food out of her hand that she had for it and then it took her bag and threw like flung it into and, the into, into their the lo- feeding pen, mm-hmm. and then all of them come and get it, and it was so funny because she freaked out <laughs> so bad. Because she's kind of like a she's smaller. She's smaller, and like she's not like it's not like she likes animals, but it's like it it's was still kind of wary because you know you know they're wild animals. And... Yeah, she's it was definitely you could tell it was definitely not her idea for this vacation, but she still didn't. She had a it. great time. Mm-hmm. And but, so that was really fun. And then we got to see, they actually had crocodiles and cheetahs on the on the property. So we got to go see those too. And the che- it's not like the cheetahs are like far away. Oh no, they like lay right up against the fence where you're looking at them. So that right. was pretty interesting. Sorry, I just have to talk about how they like, how the Osh and the emus get your food. Because it's almost like, it's like, it's, it's pecking, but since they're beaks are kind of rounded it's just like colliding with your hand and sometimes they'll like open mouth like grab your hand mm-hmm. and sometimes their mouth's dirty so you just have to like mud you, you put hand. mud slash poo on my hand thank mm-hmm. you for that and the emu was just mean because theirs are more pointy mm-hmm. and it's just sharp mm-hmm. but yeah then we get to see like the little baby tortoises and the young crocodiles because they don't yeah. also don't let full-size crocodiles raise up there yeah so then after we went there, we kind of got to spend the rest of the day kind of on our own. We didn't go to the aquarium. We did. So that basically we started off the aquarium. Um, we kind of had bigger expectations. Um, but what we found out about the the Two Oceans Aquarium is that none of the fish are actually like bought and sold. They're more rehabilitated. So they find like they're animals that are injured or sick and they kind of rehab them and then eventually they get put back in the ocean and then make room for more animals so that was kind of that was nice to know because it made sense because there weren't there were there were a lot of fish don't get me wrong but the thing was you couldn't it's not like going to the shed aquarium where you could spend all day there it was in and out in about an an hour hour and change Mm-hmm. And, like, because no, no, nothing there was a permanent resident. Yeah. Things were there either for specific study, for rehabilitation. Like, there were, like, they have this thing they had, like, a predator kind of exhibit. And literally it was two sharks. Maybe mm-hmm. three. Yeah. But and, they, and, and, it, and, like, some had, like, minor injuries. So it's like they were injured, they were brought in, monitored, 
get back up to 100% and then released. And mm-hmm. But it was still very, very interesting. And being able to give you very close, like, this, like, giant uh, uh, tank that, like, literally you're at the bottom and you, you can see the water level all the way at the top and you're walking through the tunnels and you can see the sharks swimming overhead. And one of them, like, turned and kind of came at us and then changed towards the last minute. It's just still surreal to be, like, that close to something like that. Mm-hmm. And then, so then after that, there's, we got tickets to go on this bus tour. So what they have is called the Hop On, Hop Off City Bus Tours. And there's different routes that you can take throughout Cape Town. And they take you to these different landmark areas around in the area. Mm-hmm. So that, so that day we decided to go um, the Table Mountain route. So we were still able to go to Table Mountain, but we couldn't go up the cable car. It was basically the bus drove all the way up to the mountain you got off, you took your pictures, and you left, which was, it was fine. Still, it was still beautiful. Oh, yeah. We got amazing. It's still know. very high. Like, we're still, like, halfway up the mountain. Yeah. It's still, it was still a beautiful sight. You still got really good pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then, basically, once we got up to the top, we kind of were like, do you want to hop off anywhere else? And we're kind of like, no, let's enjoy the scene. Let's just keep going on the line and, you know, let's enjoy the scenery. So... That's kind of what we did the first day is like we were kind of almost like getting our bearings because we knew we had a ton of time. So if we wanted to go back someplace, we could do that. So, I mean, there were so many different places we saw. We saw on that day it was like Camps Bay, which is like a really nice beachy area with a lot of good restaurants and And stuff. Like fancy, not like houses, but they were kind of like condos, like stacked condos. A lot of modern buildings. Waterfront property. Mm -hmm. But of all like... We got to the whole thing about how how it's evolved over time is they've been kept building up, so all these houses keep building up at the same level, so every so they can get the most bang for their land their footprint. Yeah, they want to. Everyone wants a beach view, so everyone keeps going higher and higher. And it's really interesting is uh, how I learned is like some people who live there, like their parents or they bought the house however long ago. And then turn it into like a four flat condo. They live on one floor, then run out the other three, and that pays for everything. So they basically live for free and just maintain the place. So it's like a big investment up front, but then they get to basically live on that for the rest of their lives, which is kind of awesome. sounds relaxing. Yeah, no kidding. And it's really weird to see like these like um, rooftop parking or like I even saw like one of those little like car elevators like drops it into the the apartment. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool to see all the different architecture. Because basically, essentially the first day we were kind of going through like different neighborhoods within Cape Town. And they had like a little speaker box and you could put your headphone, like plug some headphones in and then you just listen and they give you like a history on all the different parts. And that was really fun. And then that night, was that the night we went to Caribou? No, no, I don't know. That was after our wine night, I think. Let me look at the pictures, but I think, so one of the nights, I think, I'm pretty sure it was that one, because then, didn't we go to the Asian restaurant after, um... Uh, it, they all, it, that, the further we've been out from this, it's harder to remember all the details. Mm-hmm. Uh... Mm-hmm. Yes, it was that night. So, Caribou, actually, the restaurant that we were at... Our um, tour guide actually used to work there. He was big in the... He just, like, was a jack-of-all-trades, it seemed like. Mm-hmm. And um, he... His wife actually still worked there as one of the general managers. So um, it was it was amazing. Like, fine dining and um, very, like, I guess traditional South African food. There's a lot of, like, game meat and stuff. And Andrew and I decided to split the safari platter. So we got to try a bunch of different... Um, we had to try different meats. We had warthog sausage, which I think was by far my favorite thing that we had there, for oh, sure. Oh, the warthog was it delicious. It was delicious. And then, um, and then we had kudu, or no, was it kudu? It was one of the antelopes. We had like a s- antelope I steak. I think it was kudu. No. No, was it impala? It was impala. Well, kudu was the carpaccio, I think. Yeah. With, along with we the... had crocodile carpaccio. It was just like a big thing of meat, mm-hmm. and it was delicious. And um, it was called the was it the yeah the I just said safari platter. Yes. Did you say safari platter? I'm yes, sorry, honey. You got I got, I got distracted by the phone. So yeah, it was very 
It was very good. And then the even better part came out was the they actually, um, every Sunday night, an old employee of the restaurant actually has a tribal singing group. So the or a singing, church choir. Or a church choir, yeah. So kind she, of tribal. Yeah. And so she and the group comes in every Sunday and does like a performance in and around the the area. And they actually, so they did their original, like, singing and dancing and whatever. And then, um, I think, I'm pretty sure Tony went out and told them that Andrew and I, and then Frank and Melissa, we both just got married. So they come in and they do this whole, like, marriage kind of, like, the songs they would sing at a wedding. And, like, at that point, I almost, like, it's so beautiful in the moment. And I was, like, Melissa was in tears. I was almost crying, like... They did this whole, like, um, they, like, they had, like, a head wrap that they put on the women, and that's what they wear on their wedding day, and the men got a special hat, and it was just, like, really overwhelming, because I was, like, oh, my gosh. Being sung at. Yeah. Very, like, soulfully. Like, it was very intense music, and it, yeah, it was definitely, I wish I would have gotten, but, like, I was so immersed in the moment, I didn't think to record. Mm -hmm. I went recording, like, their general scene, and it was just very intense, and there was... Definitely people at the restaurant who did not expect it, because you could tell some very confused diners. Mm-hmm. But it, it was definitely amazing, and we had that, and then we had, like, there was an issue with, like, our desserts, so he brought a, he got us, ordered us a dessert platter, too, so it was just a ton of desserts after that, and just mm-hmm. full to the brim that night of just... Yeah, we never had a night where we went hungry. No, not at all. Like, we thought, like, oh... The horse is going to be smaller. We're not going to eat as much. We'll probably end up losing weight on this trip. Far from it. It was... Yeah, we got spoiled rotten. Because, like, every meal is like, oh, you should have dessert, which I think we talked about last week. But it was just... Especially now that we're here, it's like, we're on restaurants, so it's like restaurant portions and extra options. not like, oh, this is what we're giving you. This is like, oh, you can order what you want. And it was just... Oh, it was a thing. Yeah. So then that was... Just be that experience at that restaurant. I think that was probably my favorite place that we ate. Was at that restaurant. Yeah, I would, I would, I would second that. I think that was. I think no place, especially because like I think the next night was when we went to the Asian restaurant. The Asian restaurant, which I know we did it because um, the two people that were with there were from Indonesia. It was mainly for them, just so they could have some mm-hmm. familiar food. Which is fine. Which I even don't th- think that they really even minded that we were, you know, like. Right. It, they could have probably cared less about what they'll, we... They'll get, it's like taking us, like, if we're trying, like, oh, we're going to take it to, like, a state, like, an American steakhouse because... Just to take, like, no, I'm here to have the other experience. hmm So then... So then the next day was our Monday fun day, as I like to call it, because we spent the whole day wine tasting, and it was awesome. We went to... Three different... Four different wineries? Three different wineries? Well... So three we wineries. we went to we went and actually tasted at three wine yeah we went and tasted at three wineries but then we stopped at four because there was this beautiful winery that um I think they said it might have been closed at the time because sometimes in the winter they'll close places because there's not a lot of tourism so um we went to an area called Stellenbosch which is like a big like it's like winery after winery after winery after winery and um they it was awesome like i felt bad that like because the um mom and daughter from indonesia they didn't drink but even still they were like taking pictures like it was still beautiful you know and they still i think they enjoyed themselves for the most part Mm -hmm. um that's why i had my very millennial breakfast yeah it was your avocado toast and hummus my yeah my avocado toast and hummus so it was yeah it was uh so we actually had we started off with breakfast at the winery yeah so that was really nice and it was really there was like that that random like church group came in to like had like their usual like dinner and like breakfast and no meeting. that wasn't a church group that was the owner and her family oh it was i thought it was yeah. a, like a group okay that's never... what that's what tony was saying he was mm. like yeah that's the owner and that's her family and i think it was just like a celebration of some sort and um yeah, that was... It was really good. The and wine it was very. It was the wine was pretty good. We only ended up buying from one place. Yeah, the wine. I, the, the the wine was fine. It just didn't wow us. Yeah, I think it was wanted, our. We wanted something that was different from anything that we had had. We could get in the states, 
I mean, it was all very good, but there's one that stood out a lot, and it was the Maria wine that we got. It was at the second place that we went, um, and originally we weren't even supposed to go there, but our tour guide kind of worked his magic a little bit, and we got to go in there. And it was really cool because the wine tasting we took was called the Short Story Collection, so each of the wines that we tasted had their own little like story behind it which was really cool and wow. kind of got a lot of history behind mm -hmm. it um and the one that we ended up picking was the maria which is named after the woman who kind of brought this um needling winery kind of brought but it she to was the, the state that it was she was the wife the widowed right mm -hmm. and she yeah, she took it to the next level and kept the she did a lot of it herself like mm -hmm. picking the grapes um, making the wine, things like that. And that was really cool. And it was a really good, it's a really good dessert wine. You can only have maybe half a glass of it because it's so sweet, but it's totally worth it. And we did get a bottle of the rosé that was like on sale because it was like the end of the season. Or they and were that just, was pretty good too. Yeah, we got to bring that back with us. We didn't try it till we got back here. And it was, yeah, it was fine. I really wanted to like the Caracol. I know. Because the, the story, it's Caracol is like a, uh... A small... Elusive cat. Yes. That they didn't... They thought was like... Ex, didn't think it didn't exist for a long time? Well, they, they thought that there weren't any in the area anymore. Right. And then, like, they found it. So now they keep, like, areas of the winery un... Uncultivated. So sort of these caracols can... Because they have a symbiotic relationship because the, uh... The, uh... The caracols eat the mice. The mice and the guineas and things mm -hmm. that would eat the grapes. Or mess with the f crop. And, like, the Caracol wine had, like, a picture... The artwork was the Caracol attacking a guinea. And I thought that was kind of cool. And I really wanted to like the wine because it... The description and, like, the flavors... I was like, oh, that's right up my alley. But it was just... It was dry and it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And, unfortunately, that just one that was not worth bringing back. Mm -hmm. But we still got, like... They had pictures all over the place of, like, mm -hmm. the different drawings that were on each wine bottle. So you could take pictures like they were like big canvases you could take pictures of and i like that uh we kind of we weren't really supposed to go there because they were booked well but... i just said that am i really not like you're I'm really li like I'm listening about a lot of stuff that i'm saying today dear really... it's that back to work vibe oh my gosh it's it's been a rough it's been a rough day yeah and i'm running on little sleep because we had a an incident that we don't have to go into but yeah. it's just more home fun yeah so but my, I think my favorite part of that day on the winery, I mean, there were two parts. When we went to that beautiful one that we didn't even go into and just took pictures on that gorgeous pond with the mountain in the back. But I also liked, even though it was freezing cold because the wind was just like unusually cold, we went and saw cheetahs. An out, cheetah outreach program at the winery, which was so cool. Yeah, it was, just, it was on the grounds. It wasn't tied to the place. It was just like they, basically like they... Took, like, the back lot and was like, can we just make this, like... It's like they rent it out. Yeah. And, like, they had three cheetahs? Mm hmm And, like, it was, you know, super windy and kind of damp and cold. The cheetahs were, like, laying just in the grass. Like, they had all these nice little, like, enclosures that they could, like, sleep in to get out of the elements. But now they're just going to lay there and... We got, they were all kind of up against the fence. We got to, like, walk by and got one's attention. And it, like, did, like, a typical cat stretch and then just stared at you mm -hmm. on its back. And yeah, that was really in, that was really cool, and they were telling us about how they um, normally they have like a cheetah encounter, but obviously, like these cats were just the, the weather was not and we conducive were too to that. cold. <laughs> yeah, I was very much considering it, but I was just like, eh. And like, yeah, it was like it's all volunteer based. It was it was very cool. Mm -hmm. And then that night was when we went to the. Kind of had a little bit more time to, um, like, we had dinner and then we had more time to, like, walk around in the mall. And um, that's when our friends, Frank and Melissa, they found the grocery store that's in the basement, which right. we thought was really odd. But we ended up, it ended up being useful anyway. We got a couple odds and ends things we wanted to bring back. Yeah. So, that day was just full of drinking and that was yummy and but, oh, yeah, yummy food and drinking was the oh, name of the game. Did we even talk about the restaurant with the wine pairings? No. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, before we kind of... So, so the the last, like, winery we went to, which was... Ended up being our lunchtime. Yeah, it was very weird because they had all these big 
ornate sculptures that like decorated the whole facility, and they're all for sale for crazy expensive prices. It was just weird that they had them kind of on display. Mm-hmm. But it was like tens of thousands of dollars, which was like hundreds of thousands of rand for some of these pieces. Mm-hmm. And some were like ten feet tall, and just like it's like a giant person, like statue. And it's like, why would? Okay. Why do you want the statue? We were thinking about getting dog statues. <laughs> the dog statue looks kind of cool, to be that honest. It was cool, but it would have been very weird. And we couldn't have brought it back, and it was still very expensive. But yeah. the thing interesting about um, this place, it was it was specifically just called for wine pairings. So you had the menu. It was, a, it was a simpler menu. There was, like, like three options for, like, each thing. There's like, three options for, like, appetizers, like, three or four options for a main course, and three or four options for dessert. And there was a wine that you would get with each of those items. And I think a lot of us got different things. and mm-hmm. So we got to, like, have the, the food and the wine. And it was, I think, the fanciest restaurant we went to. Yeah, I would agree. They We took the most pictures of the food from there. Like, the, the plating was there. It was very... We were in these, like, this, like... We had this, like, room by ourselves, and it was, like... The way it was decorated and the style, it was you very... You felt like you were almost, like, in a palace... Or yes. like in a parlor room and it was very palatial. mansion and like the the tablecloth and like I'm glad that was the day that we actually like dressed up, dressed up. Like mm-hmm. wore like was wearing like a button up. I was like in like the nicest clothes I brought with us and I think that was the time to do it and Yeah. And being able to like, and I'm not a I'm not a wine person, like I like I like a sweet wine. I doesn't matter if it's white or red. I'm not I don't need a a nineteen eighty seven cab sab from I don't know, whatever the Bordeaux area. I don't, I don't know, but it's. Uh, I'm not that wine, but having the pairing and how it's supposed to complement the food actually you got to kind of experience some of that without like doing the guesswork. Mm-hmm. It was like this; these two go great together, and like, oh yeah, these do go great together, even though they're not the, my type of wine I would normally get. It did all work. Mm-hmm. So then we went to the Asian restaurant. That wasn't too exciting, but. And then going through the V&A waterfront again, and then um, the next day, that was like, that was up my alley for sure. Even though it was raining, it was all animals all day long. So the first thing we start off, we started off with was the we went to an area called Hotes Bay, and that is where we went um, to go to Seal Island, the infamous Seal Island, where it's also. A large, great white shark area. Because mm-hmm. they go there for the seals. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, we didn't see any great whites because it was kind of on and off raining a little bit. And so, Andrew, it wasn't raining when we got on the boat. So, we're like, and we took our Dramamine. Thank goodness we took our Dramamine. Because we God. probably would have been puking our brains out. I would have definitely been. Um, I was almost about yeah. half that trip. So... We're so we're thinking like, oh, Andrew's thinking like, all right, let's go out to the front of the boat where there's no head covering because he was worried that because if you were inside the boat, stale air, it would be hot, the stale air, and that would get a lot him, of people, yeah, and that would get you sick. So I'm like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. No, blah, no, blah, no one was sitting up at the front, and we're like, well, like only there was like us and two other people. And then it starts getting choppy, and we're like, ah, okay, like, no big deal. Then it starts raining, then it gets more choppy, and then now we're getting blown in the face by water. And waves. And waves, and... and, like, drenched, like, head to toe. And then they close the doors on us. And And we're like, are we stuck out here now? Well, and it was getting to the point where we were both getting very uncomfortable with how bumpy it was getting. Like, I'm worried, like, if... If, we thought we were gonna fall out of the like, we're gonna get, like if it like hits a something to the side, we're gonna get like thrown from the into the water. I'm like, there's seals and great whites in here. I do not want to be in the water. So then like they open the gate, like, come on in, and we're like, go to stand up, and I immediately like We both fell. <laughs> because like the we're the boat's it's a small boat, it's very choppy water, so it like I go to step up and I just immediately like feet out from under me, like hit my knees, and I grab the hand the uh, the handrail with one hand to hold and then probably like it's almost like you're trying to, like, balance yourself being, like, really drunk. You have to, like, plant yourself and take big steps and try and, like, pull yourself in so you're not getting blown away or rocked to... Mm-hmm. Then we're inside where people are just being bounced around and... And then it were just, we're just wet and so we're inside and it was just... It was rough. It was rough. And it, we're definitely getting bounced around and then some people threw up that weren't us, but that smell just, like... Even, like, thinking about it now, it's just like... Ugh! Yeah, it was just disgusting. Like, I was just, like, 
breathing slowly, looking out the window, just trying to, like, all right. He was trying to center himself. I was. And then, like, oh, you're still on. I'm like, we're seeing him through glass windows. I'm like, I can't get good pictures here. And We got, we, got, we tried. But and it, like, it, I just see a bunch of black lumps on gray lumps. Mm-hmm. But still, like, it was a ton of seals. And the seals were loving how choppy the water was. They're swimming, doing little flips. They were just, they were having a blast. Mm-hmm. Probably because the sharks don't hunt in that water. Or when it's that choppy. Yeah. Well, I found out once we came back on Shark Week is that the re... The time to see the Great Whites, I guess, in that area is at dawn because they use the shadow. Because I guess the water is very clear, so during the day there's not really a ton of places to hide. And the seals can see when there's a shark coming. So during at dawn, there's more shadows, so they can use those shadows to their advantage. So either way, it would have been harder for us to see a shark. But it was still cool to be there, mm-hmm. especially since I'd been watching Seal Island, you know, since the beginning of Shark, when I figured out that Shark Week was a thing, which has right. been for a long time. And that was really cool. And we also had to see um, street dogs, or yes. stray dogs. Yeah, oh, I loved them so much. They were just so friendly, and they played with each other. And Yeah, this I... whole little, uh, in, in House Bay, there was just, like, stray dogs that, like, probably get fish from people who are fishing off there. They get general attention from other people and they just have a decent existence and people will like let there's like little storefronts and like people will let them like go under their canopy and lay down like it's they're raining. not they're not bad they're not getting into mischief they're just like plain dogs uh-huh we got to watch them play take a video and there's even like found out later that like one guy just like brought his dog to play with the street dogs yeah so that was really cute um Get some free scratches free scratches oh you got some yeah we were walking away the guy was like oh talking to his dog oh you got some free scratches a day didn't you and we're like we'll get you some food i was like oh uh, they were really cute i loved it they're just all different breeds big they one thing they did really like their mutt like the mutt breeds there they weren't yes. like designer dogs there was like all from shelters all big mixed up mutts that were pretty and fun yeah and well and that's another we completely forgot to mention our little adventure so there's With a the wolf project yes yeah, so there's this project that's on the vna waterfront called the wolf project and basically what they do is they actually have like a shipping container that they've turned into like a dog a puppy playhouse kind of thing Mm -hmm. so there's an area at the bottom that that you can like walk in and you can actually sit with the puppies and then there's kind of a ramp that goes up to the top and they've plexiglassed in like a little play area so if the dogs get overwhelmed by people or just don't want to be around them they're on the top and they can play and they've got toys and turf up there Mm -hmm. and then they had a ton of volunteers that would literally like the older dogs they would just like sit around they had like different water bowls out and they would actually have people like either volunteers or potential adopters would like could walk them up and down the the um the waterfront and it was really cute and it was really fun to see them and it kind of gave us a taste of home because we yes. were really missing our dog, and so it was nice to, like, get some puppy love. Yes, I definitely like that. We actually ended up going, like, a few times actually ended up going there, just to kind of mm-hmm. get the... Well, it was fun, and, you know, I think the dogs appreciated it, too, and, um, yeah, so it was really nice to go there and, and do that. And we did donate, so it wasn't like we were going there just to get free love or whatever. Um, so, it was really... A nice, it's a nice project, and they actually like posted how many weeks they were open, and then how many dogs they adopted out. And between the time we got there and the time we left, I think they had adopted out about like about eighteen hundred dogs. Yes, in about we, less than in around two years. Yeah, time. which is a major just for something that, like operates on that waterfront every day. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't just like a weekend. It wasn't. It's like every day for like. Four hours or something. Six hours. Yeah, something like that. And it, Yeah, and, like, the people were all volunteers. Or they were actually walking the dog. It was just... It was amazing. Mm-hmm. I, like... I, we... We... I ended up... Uh, we ended up donating money, bought a book, and... That they... Like, about, like, the founder and how, like... Their story was, like, they took a... A death row shelter dog on, like, an adventure throughout the world. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. But, anyways, getting back to the trip. So... After we went to the Seal Island, we went to this place called the World of Birds, which is, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I I don't care if you hate birds or not, it's definitely an experience to go do it. Um, you're basically walking through enclosures with just birds just out. Some, some are kind of closed off um, for obvious safety reasons, but sometimes you walk in and there's a 
peacock walking across the path that you're on. Or a lot of peacocks. Or a lot of peacocks, because we got, that was kind of our thing. Or just a room full of, like, African gray parrots. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was crazy cool. And then when we were there, they actually had a monkey interaction. So they had squirrel monkeys there, and you'd basically walk in their enclosure, and um, they're like, "Oh, they might they might get on you. Don't so keep, freak out. Keep things keep pocket zip. They will steal things out of your purse, out of your pockets if it's loose." Mm-hmm. So then Andrew's like, "I'm gonna sit on the bench and see what happens," because there's like a little sitting area. Andrew sits down, one monkey gets on, then a few more. And also, I had, like, I had, like, I think at most, like, eight monkeys on me. Yes. Yeah, so one peed really on my cute. leg. And mm-hmm. then, like, they were just, like, ruffling around, like, what's this? What's this? What's and this? And he had one, so there, and the guy was following us, too, and he's like, we're like, okay, like, how do we get them off? He's like, just stand up and they'll go. Well, then there's one little s- It was a very one. content one. It was just on my shoulder, just like, where are we going? And then finally he got off at I like I leaned against like a, uh, some branches and he like hopped up, climbed up, and went away. Yeah. So then, then when I sat down, the guy decided, I'm going to put some food right on you. <laughs> and so I had like ten, 10 monkeys on me, like trying to eat food. Play some with your hair. Playing with my hair. Luckily, none of them got in my purse. I had my purse zipped. and None peed on you. No one peed on me. It was really cute, though. We got some really cute pictures. So, um, but so. then when our friend Frank went in... They um found his little um I think it was like a map or something of the he stole his paper. And he stole his paper out of his shirt pocket. And, and it ran funny. away. It's like I got it. And then just up into the trees. And the guy's like, like what if they're in like I think he like clapped or something and it dropped it. Like they're pretty yeah, well trained. It was really cute. Um, so that was really fun. And then we went to um, we saw a cassowary. We did full giant giant scary, scary bird. It's like a large angry. Turkey faced bird. Yeah. Look it up. They're it like, they're menacing looking. Yeah, especially because like we didn't like, oh, it's at the back of the trees, and all of a sudden like it heard us say it and it's like creeps out of the trees. I'm like, it was like a raptor coming out of like the bushes. I was like, the thing is gonna attack us, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So oh. then after that we went to see the penguins. They have a very popular um it's called Simon's Simon's Colony, I think is what it's called. Yes. It's in um I don't remember where it is. Simon's Town or something. And Mm -hmm. so um, it was actually nice because our tour guide was actually from that city. So he could tell us a lot about like when the the penguins are just recently coming here. It wasn't like they've been coming there for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's only been quite recently. Yes. And it's pretty cool. Like we were pretty close to um, the penguins. I mean, they were everywhere. And when I mean everywhere, they were like everywhere. Like everywhere we looked there was uh there were like just penguins and there were also some cute baby penguins that still had their little like their fluffiness and it was really cute and it was all really cool to be about like to be right there and and they're just like they're just everywhere like little like remember that on that one path there was that little family it was looking up at us and i was like yeah what are you guys doing we got to see some rock rats yeah they were running around um Oh, and then we went to um, Cape Point, which is a, like a lighthouse. The Cape and, of Good Hope. Well, yeah, it's the lighthouse by the Cape of Good Hope, and um, that was where we had to worry about baboons. Oh, I almost forgot about the baboons. So we were not allowed to have food outside of like the little like stand. We were wondering whether there was like, two people, like almost like bouncers out there, and they're there just to keep the baboons at bay. Because they will steal your food. And they they're are not aggressive. Nice about it. And they will bite you. And what was funny, we were waiting in line, because this was another place where they used a cable car to get up to the um, lighthouse. And we were waiting in line, and all of a sudden you hear all this commotion. Like, you hear lady scream. What the heck? And then all of a sudden you see a baboon with like a, a bag of nuts, tears it open, eats it all. And, and then it, runs into the bunch. It was hilarious. I was like, that's what... And they're humane about it. Like, they do... They use... I, they use slingshots, but it's not like they're using, like... It's not like a super hard material. It's, it's basically a, a freak them out. Yeah, it's just a startle them until they leave. Yeah. And like, I saw, let's see one with like a baby on its back or stomach. I can't remember how. It was just carrying a baby. And then there were like some that were on, getting on top of cars and. Like they said, like, they're make sure like, don't like open your trunk. Don't leave like a window open. They will. They will get in and mess your stuff up. They were, they're they're looking for food. They're mm-hmm. so used to it. They're like squirrels. They're looking for something easy. Yeah, so. 
But look, we didn't see. They didn't go up the mountain though. Like when we went up to like the the actual lighthouse, that's there was they, none there. Yeah. But man, it got windy because we're yeah. getting high. We're very high elevation. It was that was the same day. It was so choppy and windy. So we're climbing up these stairs and just like getting blown around. Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm not a small person by any means, but I was like you having getting... to plant because I was getting whipped around. I had a coat and I was just I was wet and I was getting blown around. And by the time we got actually the lighthouse itself. I had to hold on to the lighthouse to stay on the lighthouse. Yeah, we would have fell over. Like, and... there's, I'm glad the walls are high enough, because I feel like people would get blown over the edge of that thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I'm glad I didn't, like, wear sunglasses or anything, because those would have been gone. Like, mm-hmm. the, it was windy. and Well, we didn't even get to look over the edge, because it was just... Like, we need to get down, because I can't see or move or anything. I'm just stuck here. Yeah, and so... So we did that, and then we went to the Cape of Good Hope and took pictures over there. So that the was southernmost really cool. point of Africa, mm-hmm. where the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean meet. Indian Atlantic, yeah. So that was really cool. Um, and yeah, and that and then, was. Then we got to go to that uh, that seafood restaurant. Yes, we went to the seafood restaurant where we had I had grog. Yes, grog. You had grog. No, we had cling or. Uh, oh, that was the the. King Cl- King Clipper. Was the fish we had. Mm, and then you had the grog drink and I had that the was delicious. sunrise. And we still have our glasses that we got from that. Yes, that was we did fun. take the glasses home. Glad um, was packed okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we had like fish and it was very nice. And we were right by the water and the beach. And it, it was it was a nice stop. And the, the guy's attire was kind of funny because it's like... It's a sailor outfit. It's literally like the striped shirt and the hat. And it's just like, oh man. But it, it was great. That was a nice... That was the last hurrah for everyone but us. Yeah. But I think since we're running a little long, we might save the last part for our next episode. Yeah, sounds good. Because we're running, we're running over an hour, and it's long for us, and it's been a long day already. So I think we'll save our our days on our own in our kind of our return part trip. Part three, Liz and Andrew's adventures. Alone. Gu- yeah. Guideless. Mm-hmm. So, All right, so this is Adulting Ain't Easy for this week. Yeah, do you know what episode number this is? No, that's okay. I don't okay. know. It's better just not say it, because we'll be wrong. So, mm-hmm. that'll do it for this week's episode. Thank you guys for listening. Stay tuned in two weeks for episode three, and we might be on... There might be a Foodies that we're on before then, so fingers crossed for that. So, maybe more Africa on the next Foodies we're on. So, yay. Yeah, by the time that we get to the last episode, you're going to hate Africa. Oh, yeah. You're going to hate us talking about it, but... We're not going to get tired of talking about it, because nope. it was amazing. Yep. And we saw The Lion King, which was a fun thing, too. Yeah, so, anyway. But we'll talk about it later. All right, that'll do it. Have a great week, guys. Bye.